Hello, I'm Pastor Dave, and this is a pre-recorded sermon for Sunday, November 7th, 2021. Now, this Sunday, we're marking All Saints Day, as well as Holy Communion, so this is a shorter message than normal. But I would still encourage you to read the passage for this Sunday. That's Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. As we look to answer the question of where is God, but also realizing that Christ is our hope in life and death. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be worthy in your sight. Amen. This Sunday, as we remember those we have lost this year, it really does border on the mix between the routine and the difficult. It's routine because we do this every year on the first Sunday of November when we mark All Saints Sunday. But at the same time, this is a little more difficult because especially for me as the pastor, in compiling our list of those who've gone on to the church triumphant, between the two churches, it's nine. In addition to those I've lost in my life and those everyone else has lost in their life. On top of it, 2021 has still been a difficult year, and we're still dealing with the feelings and emotions as we try to stay grounded in the reality of what is going on. And it's really in times like this, with everything going on, that we do often ask the question of, where is God? It's a natural question to ask, where is God in the midst of all of this? The prophet Isaiah can help us through this. Because Isaiah sometimes dealt with the same difficult times and situations. And in his words, we can find our hope. From the very start, we can see something important from Isaiah. And that is that God has made promises to his people. From the very beginning up through to today, God has made promises, including the promise to make a feast for the people. It's one of many promises, but it is a promise we hold on to when we think about those we've lost, the promise of the heavenly banquet before God. It's repeated throughout Scripture. And it's an image that does resonate with us. I mean, think of the stereotypical Thanksgiving meal, what many of us hope to have later this month. We can think of the bountiful meal that you take your time to eat while celebrating and rejoicing around the table. And while this conjures up ideas of thankfulness for us, as well as good memories, it does remind us of the idea of reunion and plenty, a time without pain and suffering, and a time together in celebration. It's a wonderful image we have of what God has promised for us because it is something good. It's something to be celebrated. And this can help give us a little bit of hope in difficult times, even if that image doesn't answer all of our questions there's still that hope that is there. But Isaiah gives us more than just hope because God gives us more than just hope. And in some ways, what Isaiah offers is almost the children's sermon answer of where is God? The children's sermon answer to that is, well, God is everywhere. And Isaiah doesn't directly say that, but it's kind of there. And it's more the idea that There is no escaping God. When you read through those words from chapter 25, those verses 6 through 9, you see about how there's a shroud covering the earth, and God will destroy that shroud, a shroud that covers the entire planet. That would almost imply that God is everywhere. God is throughout this world. And if God is everywhere, that means God is with us and around us. God will not abandon the faithful and will dwell with us. And in some ways, it's nice to think, but sometimes it's hard to fully grasp. So we're going to try something. That is, I want you to think about it this way. Think of the last two years. The good and the bad. But throughout all of that, have there been moments of peace you did not expect? Something unexpected happened. Someone who's been out of your life for a while has reconnected. 
or someone new has come in and brought joy and happiness. Think of those little moments of joy, those things that give you peace. In many ways, that's the work of God. It's the reminder of God's presence with us. If we're going to celebrate when we get to heaven, God wants the, some good for us now, too. And this tells us much about God and should be something that gives us comfort. I mean, it sounds kind of cliche, but when we look at God, as we hear from Isaiah, God will wipe away every tear. God knows our sorrows. God knows our emotions. And God will deliver us from our sorrows. That's one of the great aspects of Christ coming to earth and that human nature of Christ. We think of what Christ experienced on earth. Tradition tells us that his earthly father, Joseph, died before his ministry began. But he also experienced the emotions that came with the death of his friend Lazarus, at least temporarily. We see in that passage a short verse. Jesus wept. Jesus understood emotions. Jesus understood pain and loss, as well as hunger. He understood betrayal. And if since Jesus understood these, God understands them. God, so God understands our pain. God understands our loss. God understands the separation that we have. And in many ways, God feels the pain of loss for those who will not return to him. And God grieves for that. In many ways, this is part of the reason why Christ was sent. I mean, it does fulfill the Old Testament prophecies. But it's something that God wants for all humanity. And it's found in that promise. The promise that God will deliver the faithful to him. And that is wonderful news for us because we need deliverance. We need deliverance from our pain and anguish. We need deliverance from our broken, fallen world. And we need deliverance from our sinful nature. Because we can't do it on our own. We are dependent on God fully for our hope and our salvation. It's dependent on our faith in Him. And when we look at what is promised, we hope that it is something good coming because it fulfills those promises. When we see what is happening in Isaiah, it fits so well with everything that we see in Scripture, from the prophets to the gospel of Jesus Christ to the epistles and even into Revelation. There is something good that is coming. There is something good ahead of us. And for us, it is the great reunion of the saints before God that awaits the faithful. This is something good that we can hope for. This is something good that we can rely that will happen. Regardless of the pains of today and the separations we feel, the good is still coming. And this is a hope and promise that the faithful have held to for millennia. And we'll continue to hold to until Christ comes again. One of the things I found very interesting the last year was right at the time everything was going crazy and things were shutting down. Keith and Kristen Getty, the Getty, Keith Getty being part of the team that wrote in Christ Alone, released a video of a new song that Keith wrote with Matt Boswell, Jordan Coughlin, Matt Merker, and... Matt Papa. And this was a song entitled, Christ Our Hope in Life and Death. And it's something as we close today, we should remember these words, both Sunday morning as we're preparing for communion, but also as we live through our life, we should recall where our hope is. For those watching, when you're, you could stop now and look for the video on YouTube or hear me say the words. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. What is our only confidence? That our souls to him belong. Who holds our days within his hand? What comes apart from his command? And what will keep us to the end? The love of Christ in which we stand. Oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. O oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess, Christ our hope in life 
and death. But truth can calm the troubled soul. God is good. God is good. Where is his grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's blood. Who holds our faith when fears arise? Who stands above the stormy trials? Who sends the wave that brings us nigh? Unto the shore, the rock of Christ. Unto the grave, what, well, what shall we sing? Christ he lives. Christ he lives. And what reward will heaven bring? Everlasting life with him. There we will rise to meet the Lord. Then sin and death will be destroyed. And we will feast in endless joy when Christ is ours forevermore. O oh, sing hallelujah, our hope springs eternal. O oh, sing hallelujah, now and ever we confess. Christ our hope in life and death. Let us pray. Almighty God, through the losses in life and through the struggles we've experienced, help us to remember that our hope lies in you, that through our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, the price of our sin and death have been paid. And the great reunion of saints is what we can look forward to. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is our pre-recorded sermon. The full service is live streamed on the East Salem UMC Facebook page at 845 on Sunday mornings, and we keep it there afterwards for viewing later. But until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>